Hi everyone, uh, my name is Navya Navili Nanda and today I'm going to be doing a masterclass on how to take an idea and turn it into a movement. So welcome to today's masterclass and I just wanted to introduce myself quickly to everyone who doesn't know me. Uh, my name is Navya and I'm a health tech entrepreneur and gender equality activist from India. Uh, I co-founded a company called uh, Ara Health, which is a women's healthcare platform. And I also founded a nonprofit that works towards gender equality in India. And I'm also an Earth Prize ambassador. So before we get into the masterclass, I just wanted to say that I think there is a reason why all of us are here today and all of us are doing what we do. And that's because we're all change makers. And I say that with a lot of excitement and pride because I see so many young people doing and coming up with such innovative solutions to solve very, very real problems. And that makes me really happy. And I think that being a change maker today is so important because there are so many things out there that need solving and it's our responsibility to go out there and solve for them. So I wanted to start by talking about how we can create change, but more importantly, how we can create long lasting change. I think that, you know, we all want to change the world. We want to come up with solutions and we definitely want to leave it a better, leave it in a better way than we inherited it. And creating change uh, that will have long lasting impact, not just for our generation, but for the generation after is really important. So I'm going to talk about how we can do that. So step one is definitely to find an area or a topic of interest. Now, how do we do that is probably the biggest question that everybody has. Um, and I, you know, kind of followed this uh, rule when I'm trying to find an area or, you know, a topic of interest. So the first thing, you know, these are a couple of questions you can ask yourself when you are trying to find an area of interest. So the first question is, you know, what do you like reading about? Now, this could be books, magazines, blogs, anything, you know, what are some of the topics? Uh, what are some of the things that you like reading about? Um, you know, what is your favorite subject at school? Mine was definitely English and biology. And maybe kind of that's why I ventured into healthcare at some point. But, you know, looking at what your favorite subjects at school are can also help you find something that you're really interested in. Um, the third thing is, you know, something that you're curious about, you know, what do you not have any information on? What is something that you've always wondered about? Um, you know, what do you and your friends talk about the most when you are with a group of friends? What is the conversation typically about? Do you talk about problems that you all are facing? And if so, what are those problems? And finally, just what else are you curious about? I think that, you know, we're at an age where we're still learning, we're still developing our minds and growing. And I think that there's always room to be curious. So anything that you feel that you don't know about is also potentially a great topic of interest. Um, so a real life example of this was when I started my company, Ara Health, um, how we focused in on women's healthcare and specifically looking at menstruation was when me and my friends used to talk or uh, when we used to meet, we used to always discuss it being really difficult for us as Indian girls to buy sanitary pads because sometimes there is um, a stigma or a feeling of awkwardness attached to it. Um, you know, most pharmacies in India are also very small and mostly run by men. And so we would always talk about how it was really uncomfortable for us to go out and buy a sanitary pad without feeling like you were being judged or watched. And I think that's really how we then kind of focused in on, um, you know, menstruation and women's health as a topic. So I want to remind everyone that when I'm talking about a topic or, or area of interest, it does not need to be something that you already know everything about in particular. It could even be something that you have absolutely no idea about. And I think the important thing is that you learn along the way. So step two is how do you then identify the problem that you want to solve? So you have your topic, you have your idea um, or area of interest, but how do you identify the problem that you're actually going to solve within that? 
So again, you should ask yourself some questions. The first is that, have you had any negative or personal experiences with the particular topic that you've chosen? Uh, mine was with menstruation and access to sanitary pads. So in my case, I definitely did have a negative experience. The second is how large is this problem in your locality, in your area, or in your country? So the answer to this for me was also, it was a very big problem because most women in India were feeling the same way. And the third thing is how big is, um, sorry, how big is this problem um, in terms of data? So sometimes when you read the news, is this something that people talk about on television? Is this something that you read about in magazines in your country? So for us, like I said, living in Mumbai, it was always difficult uh, not just to get access to sanitary pads, but also to get information about menstrual hygiene. And it was probably because of how stigmatized some of these conversations were in India. So we realized that this was not just a singular problem that I was facing, but probably something most girls across India were facing also. So step three is where do you start? And for this, um, I've made a little checklist that everyone can follow, which is, um, you know, you should gather all the research or data that you have about this particular problem and just create a pool of it so that you have all these statistics, um, you know, at, at your hand. Uh, then I would make a list of resources that you need to get started with your solution. So this could be... Um, you know, things like if it's a physical product, do you need any kind of material to build it? If it's an idea, then, you know, what can you, what, what kind do you need help in terms of building a group of people who could help you? So make a list of all the resources that you need. The third is to give your movement or your idea a name. Um, fourth is to start educating and building awareness around your problem. So talking to people around you about this. Um, make a list of organizations and partners who can help you, um, you know, such as organizations like the Earth Prize, who could probably give you funding to take your idea forward. Um, recruit volunteers, you know, build out a group of people who are also interested in solving this problem. And the last one is to raise funding if you need, um, you know, to really take this forward. Step four is creating your solution from scratch. So, you know, when building out your solution, these are a couple of things that you should keep in mind, which is that you should first test it on a small group of people to see that it's effective. You should then get advice from experts and get their opinion on what you have decided to take forward. Um, you should measure the impact that you tested on the small group of people and collect feedback, as much feedback as you can to help improve. And at the end, you should create a solution that is not only innovative, but effective. It's really important for your idea or your solution to actually be effective and create impact. So what we did was um, we began by giving our idea a name, which was Ara Health. And then we started posting blogs and mini videos on a website that we built. And we would, wanted to see if women were interested in reading about these topics. And we immediately saw so much success. And so we decided to fund the idea and grow it further. And now we have a really large platform where we have over 70,000 women um, reading and learning about their bodies. Uh, step five is launching and scaling. So how can you make your movement bigger? I would say the first is to definitely start in your own local area and master that first and then keep adding as you go. Um, you know, it helps to identify other regions or areas in your country that have or face the sim same issue. And the second would definitely be finding reliable partners and organizations who can help you um, you know, reach more people and also help you with their infrastructure. So we partnered with different content platforms in India. We partnered with a lot of nonprofits to try and get the word out. Uh, we started just in Mumbai, but today we're present all over India, across all cities in India. And like I said, we now have 70,000 women in, in our community. So that was a quick, um, you know, kind of, run through of what it takes to get from the beginning to the end of you know an idea um, and if you have any other questions you can always email you know the earth prize or email me and i'd be happy to answer them for you